What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell, here for Cascade Sports Television. Our guest today is Mr. Marcellus Casey, who's the director of Casey Metro Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Welcome to Cascade Sports. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Glenn. Thanks for having me. Glad that you could be here and perhaps give a new definition, a new face to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I grew up most of my childhood in Chicago. Uh, my dad pastored a church there, Lawndale Community Church. And uh, I moved to the Kansas City area in the middle of my freshman year of high school. And I uh, went to Lee Summit High School. And then um, I played football up in Northwest Missouri State. I like to tell people I was an elite walk-on. Elite <laughs> walk-on. Tell them what position you elitely walked on the field with your, your cleats on. Yeah. What position did you play? Well, Northwest Missouri State is a great uh, football school. Mel Churchman has won a lot of national championships up there. So being a walk-on there for me was a great opportunity to play alongside of guys that were a lot bigger and better than I was. <laughs> and uh, I played tight end, uh, which I was a little small for that position. But really the way that God used uh, me being up there was really for the sake of ministry. And um, I just found my niche um, in ministering to guys on the team as well as the coaches. And it's where I got my start in FCA. So I would, uh, my, my coach, when I, when I first showed up, just handed me all the FCA stuff, all the Bible study stuff, and said, here you go. And I just started uh, ministering to guys and to the coaches. And uh, once I was done at Northwest Missouri State, FCA hired me full time mm -hmm. to go work with the coaches at University of Illinois. Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Now, you mentioned to me that it's vital to plug into the coach. Uh, here they were handing you all of these materials, pamphlets. Some mm -hmm. of them, I assume, were of a biblical nature. Were you like Jonah? Did you run from your calling? Or <laughs> was that your particular meaning, purpose for the football team? Yeah, I mean, that was my meaning. That was my purpose. I mean, it was it was everything to me. And uh, and no, I didn't run away from it. It was just, it was something that I spent all my free time doing. I spent all my money doing. Um, I used to take my teammates out to dinner, take them out to lunch, give them rides, um, and just help them in any way that I could. And then, yeah, I was leading all the Bible studies. Actually, all the pamphlets and everything that my coach handed me were all of biblical nature and of FCA nature. And that's... That's how I spent all my time. That is wonderful that you could provide that service. I call it a service to your teammates and you're able to find your purpose. I like that, man. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Casey. Yeah. So now you're here in Metro Kansas City. Tell us a little bit about the organization, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Yeah. Well, we really see ourselves as a supportive ministry. And it's not that we're trying to come in and do everything. We want to support um, the indigenous leaders within Kansas City. Um, we just hired a full-time director in Johnson County, and we just hired also a center city director that's going to be working in Kansas City. And what we're seeing is, is that there are great leaders in the inner city of Kansas City. And um, there's leaders as teachers, there are leaders um, in politics, but one of the leaders that we are really excited about supporting are coaches. And um, we see these coaches, whether they're from Kansas City or, you know, they commute from Lee Summit to, to come and coach and teach at an inner city school. These leaders have a passion for the youth of Kansas City. And we feel a responsibility to support that passion. And um, if a coach becomes a Christian, we really want to train them in how to, to use their faith to impact uh, their athletes in a positive way. And um, we just we think that coaches, especially in the inner city, are a very valuable resource that we want to support and pour into. Not everybody plays sports. And increasingly, we hear in the media all too often bad examples of sports superstars when they mess up. The press will love you for a minute, but they'll love you even more if you make a mistake. How important is it for athletes to be able to have that Christ connection? Yeah. I mean, I think it's huge because anything that is going to, I mean, I think, you know, in our message with FCA, we're all sinners. Mm -hmm. We've all messed up. And uh, unfortunately, um, when you're watching TV or you're watching the media, people love watching other people's mess ups. Yes, Lord. Especially yes. when people are of notoriety or fame. 
and uh, almost <clears throat> more so than they do like in like to see them win. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. it's entertainment, and um, so so NFCA. What we've seen is that the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is power in that message and in the truth that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, mm -hmm. and that's good news for me because I deserve to be punished for my sins as does anybody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, the real message and freedom that we see is that Jesus paid for mm -hmm. what I should be paying for. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to us when we see a coach or an athlete realize that for the first time. And then all of a sudden, they realize that they don't have to pay for all the mess ups and all the sin that, they, that they've committed. Then they have this new freedom mm -hmm. uh, to live their life, to enjoy other people, to be... Uh, on mission to help other people because they've been freed of uh, burdens that they've carried for their entire life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And I'm afraid, Mr. Casey, we don't do that all the time. And when we do do it, a lot of times it's for all of the wrong reasons. Right. Let's talk about uh, winning and, and football. Does it take the edge off a little bit? I know when Tim Tebow came out and professed that he uh, was abstinent and that he was living a Christ-centered life, people were like, well, this is football, man. We don't want to hear that. Uh, right. you, that translates in the field, oh, you're weak, you're soft. He, this dude is sugary sweet. He's not going to bring us any championships. But contrary to that, there's another perspective that yeah. being Christ-centered actually helps. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we always talk about, man, if Jesus um, was alive today, I mean, he would be he would be a football player. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he is alive today. Yes. But yes. I mean, we the Lord. yeah, we believe that when you're competing in sports, that it is an act of worship, uh, whether you're running track or basketball, volleyball, football, that when All you right. when you come in between those lines, it's like you're at church. And really, we believe that we play for an audience of one. And um, I've had the privilege to speak to a lot of people, uh, whether it's NFL teams or university teams. And, and I love doing those pregame chapels because I get to get those guys or, or girls focused in on the fact that when you step in between those lines of competition, this is a time for you to worship God. This is a time for you to go hard, to hit hard, to perform really well. And everything you've done to prepare up to that moment is a gift to God. And uh, so we don't see that Christianity makes you soft at all. And um, I mean, we even have some of our Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Jeff Allen and A.J. Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And they both, I mean, they've been in chapels that I've Kansas done City at University. Yeah, they've been in chapels I did when they were at University of Illinois because I was there for six years. And, right. and I love talking to those guys about, hey, when, it's, when you get in between those lines, it's time to go hard for the Lord and for the sake of what he's done for your life. That is just excellent. Uh, getting away from hero worship and worship the one who makes it all possible. Absolutely. Now, you shared a little bit about your testimony. Can you tell me how do you look at being uh, one of the first, if not the first, African American in this position? Mm -hmm. um, are you putting a is this a new face for the organization? Can you speak out on that at all? Yeah, I mean, I've been here for three years with Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I have felt that not only the organization of FCA on a national scale and my supervisor, uh, but also our donors, our board members. I feel like the Kansas City community has really embraced my leadership, <laughs> and I mean, it has not been um, a hurdle at all. You know, being an African American, I mean, not an obstacle. Yeah, not an obstacle. And actually, I mean, I, I feel like people have just been so uh, supportive and open-minded uh, that it's just, it's really given me an advantage because it's, it's new, it's fresh, um, and people have been really supportive. Well, you're leaving a legacy, certainly. Speak about the link between education and sports. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can be, we can perform wonderfully on the field, but if we're not putting in any effort in the classrooms, is there a balance there a miss yeah yeah I especially doing uh, work with athletes in the university setting um, and and then you see guys like Jeff Allen and AJ Jenkins that have made the transition to now being professional athletes mm -hmm. um, those guys I mean they had to work hard in the classroom and and it really serves because now you see them as men you see them with children and being married and decisions that they have to make not only financially but just life-wise and being a healthy person they wouldn't be able to make those decisions 
um, if they didn't have an education. Mm -hmm. And uh, and for me as a young man, I mean, I love sports, but I was never a great athlete. Like I said, I mean, I like to call myself an elite walk-on, but like I didn't, you know, I didn't have a future in being a professional athlete. And if it wasn't for the education that I received uh, in growing up and in a university setting, like I wouldn't be able to do uh, what God has called me to do. So education's everything. Education is everything. We like to hear that here at Cascade Sports. Thank you for sharing that, Mr. Casey. Now, you uh, did mention when we were talking earlier that Fellowship of Christian Athletes is going to present a new presence in the inner city. Oh, yeah. Are there some upcoming projects, <laughs> uh, some upcoming um, hopeful projects that you'd like to talk to us about? Right. Yeah, we just hired a, a full-time director named Alex Campbell for the center of the city, and he's going to be working in the inner city schools, uh, not only the public schools, but also the private schools. And uh, like I said earlier, I believe that FCA is going to be so strategic, especially in the inner city, because um, when, when we're looking for male leadership um, and we're looking for leadership um, in the community, I believe that coaches are going to have a huge impact. And I mean, there are so many men and women in the inner city, um, teachers, um, school administrators, and these people need to be supported. And, and we, we're not coming in uh, to, the, to the inner city to reinvent the wheel or, or just start all these new programs. We are here to support mm -hmm. the leaders that are in place. And we believe that, that whether it's in the school or AAU coaches or club team coaches, we want to support those coaches because they are the indigenous leaders of our community. Thank you, Mr. Case. We'd like to invite you to come back more often to share with us about FCC programs. Mm -hmm. I said FCC. This is not the Federal Communications Commission. This is FCA <laughs> Fellowship, Fellowship of Christian, Christian Athletes. Athletes. Yeah, yeah, and perfect. we will be hearing more from him and learning more about the organization as time goes by. Was it, are there any rapping words, any words that you'd you like want to me close? To rap? If you no, rap, I'm kidding. I'm rap, rap, what's up, Mr. <laughs> no, you did a great job, and, and we appreciate being here. And I've just been here three years. Thank we you. love Kansas City, and uh, we're looking forward to making a big impact. Now, are your sons, are they athletic enthusiasts? I only have one son. He's six weeks old. And uh, I have three daughters that are seven years old, five years old, three and two years old. And, uh -huh. and they love sports. And uh, so we have, we have a fun time. And I'm sure that you're instilling in them a love for Jesus Christ, and that's important. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Casey, for sharing your testimony. I'm Glenn Bryan Frizzell for Cascade Sports. Go online, check out more video at CascadeSports.tv. And remember, the sky's the limit. If you aim high, shoot for that moon, and you miss, at the very least, you can say you landed among the stars. CMG wants you to always remember the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Thanks. Thanks.